Hey guys, welcome to our daily encounter. Psalm 53, which reads very similar to Psalm 14, is a psalm in which David is lamenting the corruption and the foolishness of the human race. And there's a lot of elements to this psalm that might make one think that it is directed towards Israel's enemies. And to be more specific, the Gentiles. Especially a person who is a Jew uh, after the time of the exile. They especially would have read that psalm or this psalm in that way. It talks about in verse 1, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have committed abominable injustice. There is no one who does good. God has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there is any who understands who seeks after God. Every one of them has turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good. No, not even one. And then this verse will really make them think of, a gen of uh, the Gentile nations. In verse 4, I have the workers of iniquity. I'm sorry, the workers of wickedness, no knowledge, who eat up my people as though they ate bread and have not called upon God. And then there's a call in verse 6 for the restoration of, of Israel. It says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion when God restores his captive people. Let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. And so a post exilic Jew would read this psalm. And think, yes, this is a psalm against the Gentile nations. This is a psalm against our enemies. The ones who have risen up against uh, our nation, had taken over Jerusalem, led us into exile, held us captive for some 70 years. And then even after letting us back, still holding us in oppression, generation after generation after generation. And this would even be true with the first century Jew who is under Roman rule and is constantly reminded of the fact that they are not an independent nation, but are constantly under the watchful eye of Rome. And they too would have read this psalm as directed towards the Gentiles and would have lamented the fact that they are being oppressed, that the Gentiles are eating their pe uh, God's people up and are oppressing God's wonderful nation. But there's a plot twist, because when you get to Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul does something totally different with this psalm. And in Romans chapter 3, this is what Paul says, and, and he's, he's going to quote almost verse by verse uh, this psalm, at least the first four verses of Psalm 53. In Romans chapter 3, in verse 9, this is how he sets up these verses. He says, What then? Are we better than they? That is better than the Gentiles? Not at all, for we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks are all under sin, as it is written. And then he quotes uh, Psalm 53, and we could say Psalm 14. As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. And then he'll go on to say, Later on in the chapter, in, in verse 23, For we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so here, a psalm that perhaps for centuries were, was used to speak out against the Gentile nations, those who were oppressing God's people, is now used by the Apostle Paul to say, No, it's, it's just not, sin is not just a Gentile problem. It's a Jew problem. It's an everybody problem. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, are we better than they? Not at all, for we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks are all under sin. And so Paul reinterprets Psalm 53 to say, yes, it does apply to the enemies of Israel. That is true. The enemies of Israel, the Gentiles, had become corrupt. They had rejected God. Romans chapter 1 talks about the downward spiral of uh, the Gentile nations. And they had become corrupt. They had fallen into these characteristics. But he would also say it applies to us as well, Jews as well, because we've all messed up. We've all fallen short. We've all become corrupted in our ways. We all have acted foolishly. And there's none who does good, not even one. And so what this shows us is, is that all of us have the same problem. 
But Paul would go on to say, because we all have the same problem, we all have the same solution. And that solution is by finding a righteousness that's not through the law, but through Christ. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we are no longer under the condemnation of the law, even though we were once sinners, even though we once could be described in these ways. Now we have put on the righteousness of Christ through faith in him. And now we stand justified uh, before God. And so here what we find in Psalm 53 is not just a Gentile problem. We find an everybody problem. But in Romans chapter 3, we see the solution to the problem. As we turn to Christ, we have positional righteousness. In other words, we are able to stand justified before God, which leads us into practical righteousness in which we enter into a, a sanctification process of uh, becoming more and more like Christ as we fix our eyes on Christ. But we always remember that where we came from, we have all sinned. We have all fallen short and therefore we all need a savior. And so that's kind of Paul's point. So as we do our reading today, we read Psalm 53. Let's do it with Romans 3 in mind as well. And to apply some of the principles that we've learned in the New Testament to this psalm so that we can better understand it. So these are some things we can think about and reflect on as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.